All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's, uh, I don't know how many of these CLLC meetings we've had, but this is probably the 18th or the 20th or the 20 something. And uh, especially pleasing for me tonight because two of my great partners are here Peter Scantrino, who's the president of our Southeast Asia Foundation and who presented last month is here. And now you finally get a chance to meet Mizuki, uh, who will present here in, uh, in just a couple of minutes. And uh, Mizuki, just meet the crowd. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I, I, know, I know, Peter, you recognize perhaps half of these people, at least, from, uh, from your travels in Cambodia. And I'm hoping, Mizuki, that um, we'll be able to get you introduced to some of these people face to face one of these days also but but mazuki has um, got this new son who's keeping her pretty busy almost full time <laughs> that plus your job and how old is dominic now he is 16 months now so not so new but still new <laughs> that isn't quite so new yes and he's uh, I know he's walking, but he must be running by now, too. <laughs> he is definitely walking really fast. And so if you hear him screaming, I apologize ahead of time. All right. Well, <laughs> we've we've had kids around in these meetings before, so that'll be just <laughs> fine. Well, I'm, I'm going to uh, get us going here. I don't see any new uh, uh, arrivals and I'll let them in when they when they appear. Um, but Mizuki, we're uh, we're not only very pleased that you're here, but we're really looking forward to your presentation because over a series of many of our workshops with the CLLC, Peter and I and, and others have talked about the importance of employee engagement and, and having people really connected with and feeling passionate about their work. So I think that uh, your topic is very timely for us. And without further ado, I'm going to invite you to do screen sharing and take it from here, Mizuki. Sounds great. Thank you, Bill. Um, let me see. Can everyone see my screen? You bet. You bet. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we'll get started. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this topic, employee engagement, but. More importantly, I'm really excited to join this meeting. I've been telling Bill I've been wanting to join this meeting. And um, unfortunately with my son, like he said, it's been a little bit challenging to join, but I, here I am. So hopefully this will just be the beginning. Um, but a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Mizuki Asano Lexton. I am the board member at Southeast Asia Foundation. Um, my background is also in organizational behavior, behavioral science, um, and I've done work around employee engagement, performance management, um, organization development at a for-profit organization in the U.S. And currently, I'm a people analytics and workforce strategy um, at Facebook. So that's a little bit about myself. And again, I'm excited to talk about employee engagement today, which is a part of the continuous improvement process that Peter touched on last month, I believe. Let's get started. So before I jump into the content, I wanted to start out with this story about St. Paul Cathedral in London. Um, I don't know if any of you know St. Paul Cathedral, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous cathedral that was built in 17th century. Um, and this story has been told in many different ways, but I think it's also a very valuable story to tell in this context. So it's really a story about an architect who built this cathedral, Christopher Wren. Um, when the cathedral was being built, he wanted to go visit how things were going. And he walked by the cathedral, there were three bricklayers, three workers essentially building bricks to build the foundation and layer of the cathedral. There's three men, one bricklayer kind of hunching over and kind of a little bit in an angry way, trying to put the bricks together. Second man, also a bricklayer, he's standing and just diligently putting the bricks one by one. And then there's a third man 
who's also bricklayering, but he just seems to be standing a lot taller than the other two men and just really happily building this building. So Christopher asked the first bricklayer, you know, what are you doing? And then the first hunchback, you know, bricklayer answered kind of with an attitude, you know, like I'm building a bricklayer, can't you tell? And Christopher said, okay, he walked over to the second man and he said, what are you doing? And second man answers, I'm building a wall. You see, I'm a bricklayer and I need this job in order to provide for my family. And Christopher said, okay. And then he walks over to the third bricklayer and he asked the same question, what are you doing? And the third bricklayer answered with a very proud face that I'm building a cathedral and this is going to be the greatest cathedral ever. And he actually claims that he's a cathedral builder, not a bricklayer. And Christopher thought this interaction was very interesting. And I think this story is very relevant because all three bricklayers are doing the exact same jobs. They're doing the exact same tasks, but their outlook is very different. You know, the first one doesn't want to even be there. He's just doing what he's told. A second one, you know, he's doing a great job, but he's just treating it as it's a job. And for the third bricklayer, he was just very engaged and he was just, he found the value in what he was doing. And he was very much connected to mission and the value of his job. So I wanted to tell this story to kind of give you a little bit of preview into employee engagement and what could what that could mean to the person doing the job. So let's get started. And I also want to share this quote by Jack Welch, who is the former CEO of General Electric, no company small or large can win over a long run without energized employee who believes in the company's mission and understand how to achieve it. Um, this is very important quote, I think, because no matter the size of your organization, no matter if it's for profit, nonprofit, you no know, type of work you do, at the end of the day, work is done by people and people are the biggest asset in our organization. And it's important that people are engaged in the work that they are doing. So what is an employee engagement? I'll start with what, I'll, I'll start by telling you what employee engagement isn't. So it's not simply about happiness. Um, someone who might be happy at work doesn't mean that they're necessarily working hard or productively on behalf of the organization. So I may go to work every day being happy because all my friends are there and I can socialize but it doesn't mean I like the work I do, or it doesn't mean I find value in the work that I do. Employee engagement also isn't about just satisfaction. So satisfaction, employee might do the work, but they don't go extra. They don't go um, above and beyond. So they might just do the work, five o'clock comes around and they go home. Or better, you might be you know, doing the job and then another person calls and give you another job opportunity and you just might take it because it's just a job, right? Well, this is what employee engagement looks like. So employee engagement is more about emotional commitment individual employee has to the organization to it. So it includes things like extent to which people commit to something or someone in organization. So again, they find a value in the mission of the organization. Think about the third bricklayer. You know, he understood the vision of building a cathedral. To him, it wasn't just a job. To him, it was building this great cathedral that's gonna stand for centuries and centuries. And it's also about employee discretionary effort. And what that means is going above and beyond. So this would look something like if you were a teacher at a school, you might just go to school to teach students, but if you had discretionary effort, it could be that you know, you're know you teaching at a more not so wealthy neighborhood and kids might not have books and teachers go out on their own to go buy books for them. Not because somebody told them, not because they had to, but because they wanted to and they really found value in educating those kids. So it's more about going that extra mile um, not because for the money or the profit for yourself, but it really is about achieving those value because you, you believe in it. And also it's about how long you stay at an organization as a result of the commitment. Um, this is pretty easy to understand, but you know, if you believe in the value of the organization, it's really part of who you are. And employee retention is one of the challenge a lot of the nonprofit organization have because the work is not easy. So it's very important the employee is committed to the work that they're doing. 
So employee satisfaction is more about what employee gets versus employee engagement is more about what employee gives back to the organization. That said, so employee engagement in practice, um, what that would look like, you will see high degree of job, job ownership, you'll see pride in the organization, um, you'll also see belief in the work that they do, involvement with their work, um, enthusiasm, like you saw on the third bricklayer, he was just happy to do what he was doing, high degree of commitment to the organization. And I think I myself has been in a position where I was engaged or not engaged, and it really does make a difference. And I think one of the key things we forget about employee engagement is not only good for the organization, but it's also good for the individual who are engaged because you know we're at work a lot. Um, we put a lot of our time and effort into what we do every day. So it's really important that you find value in what you're doing. And I think a lot of that relates to most everyone on this call, why NGO needs engaged employee. But it's also important to know that um, organization with engaged employees are more productive. Um, a lot of the work that all of you are doing is a very valuable work. But like I said earlier, it's a very difficult job to do. It's important that employees understand the value and then they believe in the work that you're doing. Um, see less employee turnover. There's quite a bit of um, turnover in the NGO world. So again, it's, it's um, a way to help employee be part of your organization and not just a worker. And high level customer satisfaction. There's been research done that talks about specifically in nonprofit organization, how employee engagement ties directly to increasing funds for the organization, um, increasing satisfaction, growth of the membership. So there's a lot of value in really spending more effort around employee engagement. So I talked a lot for a little bit. So let me take a moment um, based on everything that I just went through. Love for all of you to spend a few minutes, maybe two, three minutes or so with a self-reflection. So I want you to think about the work you've done in the past in the time you felt most engaged at work. Think about what that looked like, um, what situation really contributed to how you feel. Um, and just jot it down. Um, I'm not gonna ask anyone to share yet. So just think about it for a minute before we move on into talking about what the employee engaged environment looks like. Let's spend a few minutes and Bill, keep me honest on if it's been a few minutes. I will call you at two minutes, Mizuki. Two, two minutes always feels like a long time when it's uh, 
<laughs> what is such a silence period but that was uh, that was your uh, uh, your two minutes thank and, you um, and we just had uh, uh, shiv long is is joining us so he's just uh, coming into the group perfect welcome Back to you mizuki thank you i was thinking the exact same thing though <laughs> two minutes feels very long um, but I, I do think these type of self-reflection is important because i feel like engagement is something all of us can relate to whether it's in your own life or you know the people that you leave the team you work so with. Many, uh, 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 So okay, keep this. Oh, no problem. You got it. Okay. So keep those notes for yourself for now. Um, as we talk about, you know, then how do we create these environment that allows employees to feel engaged, your teams to feel engaged. Um, keep those to yourself. Um, and at the end, let me know if there are anything that you came up with that we didn't talk about. Um, this is certainly not a comprehensive list of how to create an engaged workforce. Um, I think that could lead to a rich conversation as well. So let's talk about creating an engaging environment. So one of the important thing in creating employee engagement, um, engaging environment is leaders. Um, actually, sorry, something was showing on my screen. I didn't want to make sure that it wasn't showing on your end. Um, so leaders really do help create the culture of engagement. Um, oftentimes leaders really model the way and people on your team, people in your organization really looked up, look up to you and you really do set the tone for a culture of um, culture of your organization. So a couple of things that we bulleted out that we think are important and also based on research, um, making sure that you hire a qualified employee. And what that means is finding the right fit for the role that you are. Um, there are things that that you know if the job is too difficult for them too easy for them it's not what they want to do it's going to be certainly harder to get those employee engaged so make sure you're hiring qualified employee for the job or for the role that you're trying to fill show that show that um, the leaders care about each employee we are people we want to be cared for we want to work with people we don't want to work with machines so it's really important that we treat each other with respect and care um, provide opportunities to perform well at challenging work. One of the things we know a little bit about motivation is that it's important for us to stretch a little bit. It's important for us to try different things. It's really important for us to continue learning. Most of us likes to learn. Most of us likes to continue developing yourself. So part of creating an engaged workforce is about creating those opportunities to perform challenging work. Offer recognition and positive feedback and employee contribution on an ongoing basis. Um, feedback is a key important aspect, but recognition is also very important. And what that means is, you know, simply saying thank you or giving some sort of recognition when somebody contributed in some way. It not only allows people to feel appreciated, but it also allows them to know what they did well so they can do more of. Provide personal support for each employee. Um, similar to the earlier point about care, um, people want to work in an environment that is positive and nurturing and caring. Show each employee a link between the work you do and the success of the organization. Part of leader's job really is to lead and provide those vision for the people to follow. And more you can connect each individual's role to the organization's goals and its mission, you really feel like you are contributing to part of the goal, part of larger thing outside of the role that you're doing. Again, going back to the cathedral story, the third bricklayer seeing the bigger vision of building a cathedral and not just layering bricks. Um, that's a really key, important key message in that story is that you really see the bigger picture um, and not get out get too caught up on the day-to-day -day task, but your individual goals are tied with the organization in some way. And that's something that leaders can certainly help do. Give opportunities for growth and development on the job. Um, again, this is more about ongoing learning, ongoing development, and it doesn't have to be a big learning. Um, it could be little things, but what are some of the things that people are interested in that they want to continue building on? Um, that's a very important thing that we often talk about in my job is that employees want to continue to develop and grow and how do we create environment around that? 
So in order to increase engagement in organization, what's really important is that jobs are meaningful. It's something that brings value to each individual. Have a variety. So it could look something like switching up roles here and there or job shadowing, giving people opportunity to try different things, to try and build their strengths. Um, allow autonomy. So what that means is giving people more responsibility, ownership, and feel like they can contribute more of themselves, not just being told what to do. So a lot of the times um, people like to be part of the planning strategy session and they're giving the framework of what they need to achieve, but they have the autonomy in terms of how to achieve it, or they can be creative around the work that they do and how to achieve that end goal. The final piece I want to mention is including coworker support. So I think um, many of us have friends at work. Many of us like the people we work with. And that's an important part of engagement too. It's being part of the community. Um, I think CLLC is a great example. It's about the community and the people you work with. Um, we want to be surrounded by the people we like. So that's an important piece too, to how do we create an environment that has a strong moral, strong support for coworkers. And another thing I do wanna talk about in terms of employee engagement is, this is great, you know, I understand how to build an engagement culture, but how do you, how do you know where I'm at or what am I supposed to do with it? So um, oftentimes in my role in the past, what we've done in the past is measuring engagement because if we don't know where we are at, we don't know what we need to work on. So today I wanted to show, share some resources in terms of how do we measure engagement? What are we gonna do about it? And what are some example? And again, this is just one example to share with you. There are resources that I link to this PowerPoint, but I'm also happy to talk more about it one-on-one um, -on -one if anybody's interested in talking more about, about measuring engagement. So one of the way you can measure engagement is through a questionnaire or survey. Um, there's a lot of resources out there. I'm providing 10 questions here, but um, there's a lot of tools that you can use, or it could be, it doesn't have to be an online tool. It could also be a paper tool. However, that works best for your organization. But um, what I would recommend for those survey question is to have five rating scale. So from one strongly disagree all the way to strongly agree. This is just gonna help you interpret your survey responses better. And here's an example of what the survey question looks like. So 10 questions, um, very simple. I am proud to work for my NGO. I would recommend my NGO. That's an anchoring question. Um, that's something that would help you understand engagement. And the questions that you see at the bottom, um, things like my NGO inspires me to do my best work. My job gives me a chance to grow and develop. You'll see some of the concept we talked about earlier is built into these questions. And I like this set of questions because it's a very simple question, but it's also a very actionable question. Um, but it's not so specific that um, it's going to it's going to open up more rich conversation after the survey. Another one that's important is, you know, I find my personal meaning and fulfillment in my work. Um, my supervisor takes a personal interest in me. I'm not going to go through every question, but you kind of get the gist of it. Um, it talks about the organization. It talks about your alignment with your goals with the organization, the person you work with, your boss. Um, and these are important as all important aspects of employee engagement. And what you do with the survey is the most important part of measuring the survey. So before you get to the results, some of the things you wanna consider is, did a lot of people complete the survey? Let's say you asked 100 people to complete a survey, only two people responded. Your response is probably not gonna be representative of the whole group. Um, I put 90% here, but depending on your size of your organization, you can probably get a good sample um, based on what you think is right and make judgment call in terms of how you want to interpret the results. Um, for each surveys, um, because I the example I shared was 10 question, if you add up the question, um, you'll get the total score. And because of the, we're using rating scale one to five, the lowest possible question or answer would be 10, the highest possible score will be 50. Um, and the way you can interpret the results is you can average all the total and you can also average by questions. Um, 
segment the questionnaire based on the groups that you're interested. Maybe you're interested in seeing results by group A versus group B. So there's a lot of things you can do with the results by understanding it. But the point of the survey is to help you identify area that you're doing well in terms of employee engagement and the areas that you might want to work on or something that you're hearing from your team or your employees that they want you to work on. Another thing that's not on here that engagement survey work I've done in the past that was really important is based on the question you ask in the survey, you're also sending a message to those people. These are things that's important to our organization. So it's a form of communication as well and sharing with them that what your values are, what the organization cares about most, and then employees will respond and it becomes more of a two-way conversation in that sense. So one way to interpret results, um, this is on the scale. You can start to see, you know, the very highly engaged versus highly disengaged. So you can average out the score and see where you fall and see what areas you wanna work on. Um, sometimes it's really difficult to move the needle if somebody's completely disengaged, they might be already one foot out the door and that's okay. Um, I think where you have the most opportunity to do something about is more in this middle ground, moderate degree of engagement to low degree of engagement, um, because they're a little bit unsure. So if you tap in a little bit deeper into why they feel the way they do, it's going to help you understand the challenges and you might be able to take actions on it in order to create more engaged workforce. This is one thing I wanted to share that I've used in the past um, and ignore the reference to dashboard. Um, it's not important for this conversation, but it's an important model that I've always liked using. So after the survey, what happens? And it's the framework of what, why, and how. So what is about looking at the survey results, understanding the survey results in terms of numbers and sharing back to your employees that this is what we heard. And that's one key message telling everyone that, you know, we asked for your feedback, your, you provided feedback, we heard you. And then you move on to the why stage. Why stage is going beyond what the survey answer says and really digging deeper. So now from the survey, you've highlighted areas that are challenging. Maybe you can have a secondary conversation with your team to better understand why do they feel the way they do. Because simple survey is not going to answer all those questions for you, but it's it's going to allow you to highlight the areas you need to work on and then important conversation can follow that. And then how is about based on understanding what and why, what actions will you take and how is very important in terms of um, the action, because you also want to involve your employees in your conversation on actions. So oftentimes employee engagement is thought as something leaders have to do on their own, but it's really not. If you allow the conversation to happen, you can come up with solutions together. And that will actually allow you to be more creative and really get at the root of the problem or root of the challenge the employees might be facing. So I just wanted to share this as a resource. Um, the Voices is just an acronym that we came up with for the organization I worked for at that time, but um, it resonated with the leaders and employees. So try it out. Um, again, if you wanna talk more about it some other time, please let me know. So creating action plan is the most important thing about asking survey. You can't just do the survey and not take action on it. Um, we're committing basically as a leader to take action if you're asking the survey questions. So understand what strength and weakness was identified in your survey. Um, what can you do to build on the strength? What do you need to do to eliminate those weaknesses? And then when you when you get to that house stage of coming up with your action plan, make sure it's very specific. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of the SMART goals, but that's one way to look at it. You know, um, this is just the three bullet points I added, but who's going to be responsible, um, who does what, by when. You can start to put a little bit more specific areas within your goal so you can really achieve it and move your needles that way. And repeat your survey again. I put one year um, as an example, but based on your organization, again, you can do this every quarterly or monthly might be too much, but every other month, um, make sure you're checking in with employees to understand where they're at in the employee engagement. And another thing to note about employee engagement is it's also gonna fluctuate. It's not always gonna be high all the time. It's not gonna always be low all the time. 
So making sure understanding those nuances and having those right conversations, depending on where people are at in terms of employee engagement. So with all of that, um, going back to my point earlier, satisfied employee wants to get an engaged employee wants to give. So I urge all of you to continue working on your employee engagement. I'm sure all of you do in many different ways, um, but it's really important that we tap into individuals' um, value and make sure that they're committing to mission and the value of the organization. And here are some references um, for the survey and some of the survey tool. Um, I put a couple on here um, that's more of an online tool, but there are also additional resources um, that's shared through the um, guide to engagement and commitment at the very top. So that is all, um, Bill, in terms of my presentation, love to open up to questions or if anybody wants to share um, what they wrote down that didn't really come up that you want to talk about with this group. Well, this, gr this group will uh, engage with you shortly, I'm sure, Mizuki. Um, I, I want to... Uh, be the first to say thank you for a very thoughtful um, uh, presentation. I can see that you put a great deal of energy and thought and preparation for this, uh, for which we're most grateful. Um, thank you for stopping the screen sharing. Now I can find all the faces out there. <laughs> and sometimes this group is a little bit slow starting with their questions but they know that if somebody doesn't ask a question pretty quick i'm going to start calling on people <laughs> <laughs> so we will leave it open to volunteers for 60 seconds um, perhaps um, someone would like to uh, say a little something of what they noted during your uh, I, I have a i have a comment bill um, peter jump in i i am jumping in um, as an ngo you have an advantage over a pro for profit organization because people come to your ngo i'm guessing because they like what you're doing they embrace your mission mission embrace your vision and want to help you with that. So when you have those things going for you, when you hire an employee, you have made a big step along the path towards engagement. That's very much in the same same light that you and I and Mizuki tend to stay engaged on our mission and our organization because exactly. we, we know <laughs> we're making an important and profound difference in a lot of lives and that it, it keeps me quite energized. I completely agree. And Bill, you mentioned earlier about putting presentation together. I honestly had more fun creating this PowerPoint presentation than I do on my regular job. And I think it's because I, I really care about this organization and the, all the great work everyone on this call is doing. Well, there you are, a shining example of, of uh, strong engagement. And Bill, Thank we you. created an organization that helped the Zuki get engaged. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> now, if we could only get so Paul engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I see a hand up. Ariel, is that you? Yes. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Are we doing hear me? fine? Happy, happy great. to uh, happy to hear from you as well. Great. Um, I thought it was a great presentation, and I actually wanted to uh, double up on uh, what Mizuki said about recognition um, of your employees, about their of their efforts, of um, the, the little successes that we can always kind of celebrate. I think it's important. Uh, I wrote in my notes today that it's important to reward. I always felt uh, rewarding your employees. Uh, in many different ways, rewarding your partners in many different ways is the best way to kind of secure bonds and build these bridges. Um, and it doesn't have to be something as obvious as like a bonus. Mm -hmm. It certainly helps, you know, if you can give something, you know, it's like you get a promotion, you get a bonus, mm -hmm. you get something. But really, it's as simple as uh, like Mizuki was saying, saying thank you, uh, recognizing a job well done, 
and doing it often, doing it in the middle of a stressful situation and then doing it again after <laughs> the situation. Um, there's, there's nothing um, I think quite as uh, important as doing that, not just to yourself, you know, I think it's good to be kind to yourself in that way, but to everyone that you're working with, it's like, thank you for this, you've done a great job doing that. Um, and then even if you have something uh, critical to say afterwards, you know, starting off with the recognition that people are doing a good job, that, that what you're doing is important. I've, I've always found that incredibly crucial. Yeah. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> Uh, Ariel, thank you, thank you for that, and and I would uh, underscore it with one of one of my favorite books. In fact, I used to buy them by uh, in a group of six, or even buy them by the dozen, and give them to my clients. And it was a book by a, by a fellow named Bob Nelson. Peter, you probably read it. Mizuki, you might have run across it as well. But it was a thousand and one ways to reward employees without spending money. And uh, to know. <laughs> Ariel's point, there's, there's a lot of ways to just appreciate people mm -hmm. without having to spend a lot of money. Just take good care. Yeah, yeah and I love that you said a variety of ways. You know, there's just so many different ways people want to be recognized or appreciated too. Well, I have a visitor first, not, not a visitor because he's gonna be uh, seen in this group uh, in the future, I'm sure, Sambath. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna meet Sambath in uh, Phnom Penh when I ar arrive there in a little over a week. And uh, I was just recently introduced to his organization. Uh, I see your hand up, you're welcome here. and. Uh, what would you question or what would you add to this conversation, Samba? Right. Thank, thank you, Bill, for a short introduction. Right. I, I am Samba, um, and feel free to call me Sam uh, for a short term and easier to remember. So um, I am the country director at Oscar Freedom Project. Uh, happy to see uh, Fiona, a family face, face here. Only one. And the race, I'm happy to uh, meet all of you. Um, thank uh, Mizuki for the presentation. I think it looks simple yet um, practical and um, just give a lot of new thoughts to me also. I, I guess um, I just have a comment here, uh, more like an interest impression um, because I actually uh, uh, see staff engagement as um, the satisfaction and happiness in a workplace. Um, but at uh, the point when you raise that uh, the satisfied staff uh, want to get and engaged staff want to give, it's a kind of uh, chain, the way I think about this, right? And reflection on, uh, reflect, reflecting on this, um, I mean, yeah, uh, it, it is true that satisfied people want to get, uh, happy staff want, want to get, I mean, the more and if you like, uh, what can I get from organization? Um, I keep hearing stuff, uh, they want this and they want that, for example. And over time, sometimes I feel like there are a lot of wanting, but not so much giving. <laughs> um, all right, and, and your presentation just, just a kind of um, like, give me the key or give me the, a different thought into this. Maybe um, there's something I can do differently. In, in order to really engage people um, in, a, of course, a positive way and, and good for all the people and the organization also. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for that. I, I as Peter said earlier, um, all of your organization, you probably do have in because people are attracted to, you know, what you do already. So you already have that. It's just adding more to how do you then connect on a more regular basis, you know, the value that they have to your organization. And happiness and satisfaction is still important, but it's not enough in terms of um, engagement. So thank you for that. Anyone else? Of course, there's someone else. <laughs> Before Bill starts picking on you. <laughs> Well, I, I want to ask you a question, um, and and it relates a little bit to the to the quietness of the group. That uh, 
my observation on some of the differences that I enjoy between our culture here in America and the cultures that I work with in, in uh, Cambodia and Thailand and Myanmar is uh, in America, people are just willing to speak out and speak up. And if they don't agree with the boss, they're gonna tell them. And, and if they, they might tell them three times just to make sure that they got heard. And what I, what I experience in Cambodia is a uh, more respect and more respect for the hierarchy. And the hierarchy could be positional, the boss, it could be age, it could be experience, it could be male, female, and a whole variety of things. And Mizuki, much of what you're talking about here for uh, for engagement mean requires that interaction and requires that uh, that openness and connection which you and i and peter and ariel you probably had that experience also in in uh, uh, in the western setting is perhaps easier to accomplish than it is in, in an eastern setting yeah, I think there's an element to that. Um, you know, I myself also having Japanese background, um, the culture is very different. So when I've worked in a company where it's more global and not so Western, even doing a simple as survey, the way people answer questions, the way they interact, or, you know, when we're given a survey and how they think about how to answer questions is very different. So I think there's a way we can calibrate in terms of you know how do we help people not speak up necessarily because I think people express things very differently but similar to kind of the recognition giving people opportunities to share their thoughts or feelings or how they where there might be in different ways and just offering different options to that whether it's survey or maybe it's just one-on-one -on -one conversation or if they're not comfortable talking to you maybe it's more about you know, building the relationship first. Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily one way to do it. And I would love to also open up to this group to see if anybody has done something that worked for your organization or the team that you were part of before. And love to learn more about, yeah, the Cambodian culture as well. Who, who has um, had an experience that, uh, that they can share with us in this respect? Don't everybody raise your hand at once. Um, Ms. Yuki, can you repeat your question? I didn't get the whole question. Yeah, and I talked quite a bit about, you know, having those conversations or interaction and openly discussing, you know, what does that employee engagement look like for your group? Um, but as Bill alluded, it's a little bit of more of a Western approach to do that. Um, and also there's different personalities too. Some people just like to talk more. Some people likes to be reflect and be quiet. So I'm just curious from this group, um, if you've had these type of employee engagement conversation or um, type of the things that we just talked about today in your organization and how, what, what approach has worked for you in the past. Uh, Mizuki, I was working with uh an American group, but the people were all really, really quiet. Um, and what I asked people to do was to write down their questions, write down things they would like their boss to talk about, and put it on post-it notes. Then I read the post-it notes so the boss would not see the post-it notes. So that got the group talking and the fact that the boss was willing to answer all their questions made them more comfortable. I like that. It's the, it's, mm -hmm. Go ahead. A That's question, an excellent technique, Peter. Yeah, a question that you could ask your employees, get them together in a staff meeting and have them answer this question. If you could get me as your boss to do one thing differently, what would it be? That's a really powerful question. And 
one way I've helped make people comfortable is I ask them to give their answers to someone in the group. So let's say it's all of us and Bill's our boss. And he asks the question, he says, okay, everybody give your answers to Lang Singh. And he'll put them in a Word document and then we'll share that with everybody. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, great. That's a way that it doesn't put the, uh, the speaker on the spot. Exactly. They, <laughs> they don't feel quite so exposed. We you know we do a version of that, Peter, when uh, in all these workshops, the, the good old days pre-COVID when uh, uh, you and I would come to town and we'd do a workshop for a couple of days. And we spent a lot of time in uh, table discussions, typically groups of five, maybe four, maybe six, but typically groups of five. And we'd ask a question at the tables and the tables would talk and then somebody would report out from the table as to, as to mm -hmm. what the thought Exactly, were. exactly. Yeah. A part of, you know, the benefit of, I think, doing questionnaire survey is you can collect those anonymous feedback. You don't have to put your names on it when you share it out. Maybe you have a person that averages the scores out or whatnot, but you can really just add up the number. So we're looking collectively at, you know, the trends of the data rather than, you know, saying that Sam said this, Bill said this. Um, that's another way to do it as well um, in terms of allowing people to voice their opinion, but not feeling so openly exposed. I'm, I'm going to ask a couple of questions and uh, Lang Seng, you know I like to pick on you a little bit from time to time. You're my good friend. Uh, and I've, I've been at your organization how many times? I bet I visited there at least six, if not eight times. And we've, we have sat in on meetings with you and, and uh, your key staff people and even with some of your board members on these visits. And I've, and I've seen firsthand an openness and a uh, and a freedom to speak openly and for people to share what's on their mind when they're in meetings with you and and your team um, how did that happen how does that come about at at, at ccdo we we you know like uh, we give everybody have a chance to talk uh, whatever we want to talk and comment and also even the leadership itself that uh, you know on the ground one I give the possibility for everybody to reflect uh, with the performance of leaderships and the thing is uh, we engage them all the all stage of even the project uh, implementation. I always use it before participatory approach. Everyone to be in and uh, not to be out. Uh, especially, you know, when we start to design a project, we get involved them from the beginning. Uh, you know, the, from the design process until implementation and evaluation, and uh, not leave everybody out because we really need them. For example, when we write a report and we really need them to give input uh, to our report. But I have uh, noticed uh, what I learned from uh, uh, Sufi is a very good presentation. And I do see that uh, we give some tip related to the survey. But uh, I have a question. So in case I do see that you, one of the, uh, sometimes you mentioned related to the uh, stack qualification. I see here is part of the involvement, engagement, employee with organization. Sometimes uh, we could not do uh, as what we want to to the uh, you know the capacity and the knowledge they are in the uh, organization. But it, it would be based on the low wall, uh, low wall of them uh, 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 to the position, but. Uh, any any suggestion related to the you know for example when we do the survey and then uh, sixty percent engagement and forty percent or thirty percent uh, disengagement with organization so what is your uh, you know advice uh, uh, to be that 
And uh, in terms of leadership, I also experienced uh, some of the staff uh, when they work with us. Uh, it's very hard in front of us. They say yes, yes. Uh, they, you know, like they perform very well, but uh, behind of us in the back sides and they, they don't do it as of what they promised. So, uh, you know, uh, as a human, I, I would say that as a human, it's very hard. If, if, if you manage a cow, manage a dog, they will follow very easy and tell them to do <laughs> and they know it. But as humans, sometimes in front of us, they say, okay, we are good and you know, they're good. Be behind is different. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just want to hear some advice and you experience to get engaged many, uh, you know, uh, experience from time to or something like that. Was yeah, and to your, mm -hmm. to your first question, so is the question more around if if um if the if your team or employee is not in the role that they want to be, but they're they either are not qualified or they're not. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm understanding the questions. The question I was hearing was if you got a, if it got your survey results back and it, you mm -hmm. were like 60% engaged or mm -hmm. which means you were maybe three on the five scale, mm -hmm. how do you draw out of the group the information that would help you be a better leader and, and build and help them gain more engagement? I think that's the, is, is that the question, Lang Sang? Yes, yes. yes. that makes sense. Yeah, no, thank you for that. No, I, I think that's a great question. Um, one of the things that survey, rather than looking at, I did say average out the total score, because then that would get you the general engagement, 60% in this case. Um, but you also want to look at the entire 10 question to see where the strong points are coming from, or where the weaknesses are coming from. That's going to, one, help you identify the area that you might want to look into more. And um, my point on actioning in terms of sharing the results with the people who provided you feedback and opening up conversation, let's say, according to the survey results, most people are saying, I'm not getting enough development opportunities. Maybe in your staff meeting, that's the topic you wanna to bring up and talk about it. But to Bill's point, if you don't feel, you know, the employee is gonna be openly talk about it, they might just tell you what you want to hear. Um, another advice I have, if it works for you, is essentially creating a conversation group without the leadership team. So employees get together, you give them a question, let's say development, what would make you feel like you're developing more? Where are the growth opportunities? What would you like to learn? Give them a question, um, have them discuss with just that group with no leadership so they're not going to feel like somebody's you know watching over their shoulder and then report that back to you and what that's going to that might help you do is go a little bit deeper beyond the survey scores to see you know what why are people not engaged or why is it 60 percent and not 80 percent um use the survey tool more to help you identify where the challenges might be but i Oftentimes, in my experience, that in itself is not going to help you get to the true root cause of, you know, what's causing it. Um, humans are complex, and there's probably multiple things happening. Um, so having those follow-up conversations is important, but that doesn't mean it has to be done with everyone. It doesn't mean it has to be done with the leadership team. It can be done just something with just the team members, and they can share back to you in however you want. That's one advice I have. Um, and to your second point of people saying, you know, yes to your face, but don't really want to do it. Again, I think it goes back to the earlier question of not getting to the true reason for it. Um, because if you only action on the surface item, they might say yes, you know, I, or they might even say, you know, yes, because they want, they want leadership to go away and, you know, they just want to do what they want to do. Um, but truly understanding why people feel the way they do might help you understand, you know, what are some of the actions you can take. Um, Bill, Peter, any additional thoughts? No, I think you've I think you've covered that and uh, nicely. And and Leng Seng, you you raised a couple of good points, and and uh, we appreciate that very much. Yeah. And um, Lita, I'm. 
May I, I see your hand up. Wonderful. Um, why don't you ask your question and I might even have one for you also. Yes, yes. So uh, thank you, Mizuki, for a uh, good uh, presentation and a good experience for me. So um, follow to the question um, to Wang Ling saying, I'm just thinking about the engagement. The engagement style is um, different way from different organizations. So if we put the, the wrong question, we, we might get the wrong answers. And um, my question uh, to you, what would you do or why if the engagement answer from the team mostly go to personal, not organizational? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the engagement survey question, you really wanna tailor it to your organization, uh, what you know, what aligns with the employees, what you care about the most. Um, partially because uh, you never really wanna ask a question that you don't think you can act on because people are gonna think like that you're providing feedback but you're not gonna do anything about it. So people are gonna stop caring. So really get to the question that one, that you care about as an organization that you want to take actions on and two, um, things that you, things that might you already know that employee it's important to the employees um does that answer your question Lita? um I'm, I'm i'm trying to um to understand yeah but um i i will um study more about that uh, answer so um the, the last question uh, misuki mm -hmm. do you think the engagement style that i'm using yeah i'm telling you that every end of the years I normally do the hot chairs um, improvement. So I ask all my team to sit down and give um, uh, answer or feedback on what everyone doing. So do you think that style is um, not a good um, style for everyone to engage or to, um, yeah, to give the true answer? So asking once a year what they're doing, is that the type of question you're asking? Yes, yes. That we want everyone to engage to, to um, yes, to, uh, what, what can I say? I mean, um, to give the true answers for organization improvement. Um, it, it depends. It truly depends on your organization and, you know, what, what type of conversation have you had based on the questions that was brought up. Um, for example, that um, we, we need everyone to um, to improve the organization, what is the weakness, what is the, the strong point that organizations should follow. So we need everyone to engage. Um, we don't want everyone to miss out the, the opportunity. Yeah. Lita, yeah, let no. me, let, I'm, I'm going to turn the tables on you and I'm going to answer your question with a question back to you. Um, and I remember very well, so Paul and I spent, what, five or six sessions with you and your team working on a strategic plan for your organization. And then you worked that with your board of directors and came up with something that that you seemed pleased with. Yeah. And in those working sessions, so Paul and I saw your team very much engaged mm -hmm. in the process. It wasn't just Lita, 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 Lita doing it and all of the rest of them saying, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, we had some good conversations. So. How does that happen in the Cambu project? How, why do those people feel free to speak out like that? Yes, because we give them the opportunity and not um, threat. Not threat? Yeah, not threat. Not stretch. <laughs> and, not, and, and, not, <laughs> and, and maybe not stress about it. Not stressed as well, yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay, so, so, um, so you create you create that environment where people feel safe speaking out. Yes. 
so everyone feel engaged with the conversation. So thank you. I I think I cover all my questions. That's that's good, and thank you for your for your contributions. And I want to ask Odom a question. Odom, are you there so that I can ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, hello, Bill. Yeah. Hello. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's nice uh, to see you here. It's uh, it's it's always a pleasure to have you you join us. And uh, yeah. And I'll and I'll say that. Odom is in an interesting position at Build Your Future Today, BFT, uh, because there's a transition going on there. Um, they have a longtime leader, founder of the organization, um, Sedda Long, and Sedda wants to become more of an outreach uh, and more of a, an ambassador for the organization and wants to have his team become more involved in not just the day to day, but a lot of the, a lot of the more important activities within the organization. Odom is taking on that role, but he's come from a group of peers <laughs> to take on that position. And maybe the issues of, of engagement and your role as you, as you take on more responsibilities, but you certainly need the cooperation of a half a dozen or eight other people. Uh, what, have, what have you found works effectively? Um, yeah, thank you again, Bill. And first, first of all, I would like to yeah, thank you uh, um, mas, uh, mas, maski, maski? Mazuki. Oh. And Mazuki, yeah, and for your, you know, your presentations and, you know, I, as a young leader, I, I, I found this is a very good tips uh, for maybe for me in the future to, you know, like consider of uh, doing something that uh, you have mentioned to, to get more, you know, like a, uh, I would say like a productive or like a, a, a good working environment for you know, my team. Uh, back to, you know, what I, I like to share uh, and, and from what I see, uh, the, the gap between, you know, let's say Professor Long Seta and then, you know, the way we, the team or myself or the team, Usually, when we have like a group conversations and uh, discussions, usually it's not so engaged, you know, like from from everyone, because you know what we what our culture and the way we we get used to it. From you know, let's say if the boss uh, say that uh, you know this is this is the uh, A B C, and then if you ask advice, so everyone will definitely agree, okay, this is ABC, you know, uh, but because, you know, this is culture and also we believe that, you know, he's the boss and, you know, he should say something always right. And then, uh, but, you know, this day, since I, I got, um, you know, like in more involved in the management, of the BFT organizations, so I I get more, uh, how you say like more time to learn from our staff and our staff we, because we are friends, you know, like myself and and the team, we we just uh, we got each other as the friends. So whatever whatever we want to talk, we talk, and then we just do together. You know, uh, the 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 difference between. Mr. Seta and myself is, you know, myself is get more engagement with, with the team because I I originally from from their level. So they, you know, we know each other, we just share what we have to, to talk. So then we, you know, we do things together. It's something like that, you know. Uh, so to 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 thumb up, you know, usually when Mr. Seta uh, talk about uh, the project. Uh, he usually get the co-team together and then me as one of the co-member will go to deliver this message 
and then discuss as a big group. So then I will I will I will be the one who you know the bridge, you know the, to to share to Professor Zeta and also the team you know. So something like that you know I I I I have uh, uh, you know we we have been doing uh, something and then till till now and more and more uh, practicing uh, you know uh, uh, this day. Well, it's it sounds to me like like you're working in an area of openness <laughs> that it's uh, it's okay to it's okay to listen you you want to understand and it's okay to have ideas and it's okay to speak those ideas and talk about them yeah and that, that's why right, yeah too and and also one one uh, we see that very important too when when there is like a clear uh, how you say like clear project work is like clear work responsibility. Let's say uh, otherwise, let's say the staff they responsible on on health, and sometimes you 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 not provide like a clear work responsibility. So they will they will uh, you know it 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 get them misunderstand or like I don't know how you say like a uh, uh, work process get slow. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they they not let's say for example uh, staff one responsible on uh, nutrition and health and staff two responsible on education for public school. Uh, when when you get them to to work, you have to make sure the uh, person one get their working responsible uh, job. You, they 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 supposed not they they not supposed to work in some one area. But that is the, they have to be uh, very clear. And then if you want the team to work together, you have to have like a uh, announcement in, in the big group. You yes. say that, okay, we need everyone to have in this area or that area, not, not you know, unofficial sets to, to, to the staff or the responsible. I, I mean, like, I hope you get something like this. Yeah, that's, that's very helpful. Thank you. Who else um, would like to jump into this conversation? I think Sopal had hands up. Dive in, Sopal. Yeah, I, I just want to add a little bit because then I listen, uh, many of us here mentioned like uh, we do the interaction, let's say once a year or every semester and such. Uh, I would say like the way that I work with Bill or the way that I work in my own organization here, we, we rather do it like trip by trip uh, to see what's going on or project by project. That also to help uh, people to remember what actually just happened and what we want to make adjustment for the next activity. So if we could record that as well, that would be nice. I think this is just my uh, experience. So we can have people reflect on what really the test scenario that just happened and what they really want to make a change in the next activity. I just mm -hmm. want to have that, thank you. And I learned a lot from this as well, Ms. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. And Mizuki, that's a great, great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to double check with you on your, how's your time? Because I know that uh, you have a little one that might want your attention pretty soon. Um, and you're very good to stick with us in this, uh, in this conversation. So I just want to make sure you're not feeling any time pressure here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I unfortunately have to go pretty soon. I'm okay for now. Okay. Um, as Bill mentioned, it's bedtime for my son and <laughs> he just likes me putting him to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> apologies. All right. Well, if you're here and, and uh, Shailan has her hand up and um, Shailan, what, uh, what's on your mind? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Uh, the first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you, Ms. Suki, yes, uh, for the sharing the great topic for us. Yes, uh, yes, I, I learned from you a lot of the experience, but, uh, and for the survey that uh, our NGOs that uh, never do that. Yes, but um, for uh, TGC that we have the field for the education, yeah. 
for every three months uh, we have the observation class yeah for the all teacher yeah so that uh, and in the evaluation of the observation class that uh, we talk about and then after that uh, we gave them the result yeah we have the question that related to the the student that that they can that the teacher they can um, report to us that the what point that the 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 TGC that they can have then because then some student that that I cannot I send the report or send the homework or assignment on time yes so and sometimes and the teacher they cannot um like uh, threat to the, the the student so at uh, that point that uh, we can have the teacher yes before they our full time staff then um, we have like uh, if the I continue with the Lita, I mentioned that uh, we have the the yearly evaluation. Yes. So and the first that um, the the staff that they can uh, write that the evaluation by themselves. Yes. But in the last point that we have the point that uh, uh, the staff can um, report that uh, what point that um, we want to the. Uh, NGO that improve or what point that we should change. Yes. So that I I not I am not sure that and that point that it the engagement or the staff or not. Yes. So um uh Miss Sukis, yes. Well thank thank you for that. And while yes. we're having this conversation, I'm thinking about uh, two organizations here in the room that haven't spoken yet, um, although we did we did hear a little bit uh, uh, from from Jaywalk, but also Pepe, and both Jaywalk and Pepe are are working with young people. They're teaching entrepreneurial uh, skills. They're 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 really doing some work that that's centered around based in critical thinking. It's not lecture, learn, lecture, learn. In Myanmar, they call it parrot education. Um, that, that in both Pepe and Jaywalk, your, your sessions are rooted in, in critical thinking in order to get these, these kids to grow up to become leaders themselves. Um, would either of you be willing to talk, talk a little bit about how you accomplish that, how you create that sense of openness and comfort in speaking? Um, hello, Bill. Yes, come now. I'm Samnang from PP. I just, uh, I just uh, want to update uh, your questions again uh, to get my, my understanding your question, please. Oh, the question is, when you're working with your young people, your future leaders in Pepe, uh, how do you get them to open up and tell you what's on their mind and ask questions and get them engaged in the conversation? Um, for me personally, as I don't work um, uh, directly with the, the youth, um, so I'm the social media, but I also involve some part of the activity. I think um, what, but I can see the puppy do, uh, like puppy encourage students to talk like openly, mm -hmm. um, encourage them to speak to, uh, what they wish, what they misunderstand or uh, let them ask questions to open mind, and they always uh, um, listen and give feedbacks at the same time as well. And I also join the yeah. That's what I can see from but B that always give students the voice, ask them questions if they don't understand. Always incorrect to ask questions in the class. So um, so you respect us, um, you respect their voice. Yeah, you respect the voice from the all the student. That's what I can see, even in the staff. Um, if it is any concern, we always rise up. Good. And Thank we you. also hear back from our leaders as well. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I that's what I the time that FP and I can see that everyone has the voice to say, not just his state. 
uh, feeling like if I say this, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> Something like this. Like most people, they they feel like they shouldn't say this. They keep just keep in mind and don't uh, say that they want to say. But if I feel, I feel like I want just even though you are not a leader in the leader position, you are staff, but you have an idea and you write it up. Yeah. We've... And so sometimes it's not a debate, but it's the uh, um, sharing what uh, people know about the subject is not going to be raised and why. We have read our voice, we have the reason to debate what the, our leaders say as well sometimes. Yeah. That's what I see at Pepe. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's and... all from me. <laughs> No, that's what that's wonderful. Thank you. And and you know, I'm remembering back to uh, Peter, the workshop that you and I did probably four years ago, uh, and and your definition of, of of a leader. And it begins with creates the environment so that Peter, are you with me? Oops, I think he must have stepped away a minute. But the the important point, and just just picking up on what Sam Nang was talking about, is that the the leader creates that environment where people have the 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 confidence that they can that they can speak up and they'll be heard and and be respected. Peter, oh good, you're back. We were back. just talking about uh, that. That's just a key element of leadership. Way back to our workshop probably four years ago about what does a leader do? It creates the environment. That facilitates the accomplishment of organizational goals. There, I knew you knew the rest of that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pop quiz. Um, but it creates that environment of openness and freedom to, to become engaged and, and freedom to uh, express ideas and participate and to give my i i, I loved your uh, your your example of mizuki about wanting to get from the organization or wanting to give to the organization as being a true measure of engagement well i know mizuki's going to have to excuse herself here pretty soon so uh, i'm going to give you all one last chance to uh, See if there's any more questions or discussions on the topic uh, with Mizuki. I just want to give one comment, uh, not for Ziki uh, and to all the organization. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, I'm still I'm still speaking the word that uh, our college always ask for the good, excellent leadership from leaders, but please they should reflect for themselves also that uh, how they contribute back. Like here, the topic is engage them into the organization. You know, when the organization fall down or, you know, low or decrease the funding, they never complain about themselves, they complain about leader. So the engagement here is all together the college and us all together that we have different role and responsibility in the organization so every everybody must be uh, you know support each other so i think uh, yuki try to use uh, to give the presentation is want them to engage that uh, work together for the organization so without engagement is uh, we can we can do alone you know uh, Leader cannot go alone and college cannot go alone. We all, so must we all have together. a response, but everyone yeah, has a responsibility. responsibility. So mm -hmm. how uh, that uh, just just think in mind, just keep in mind that how can you engage them? How can you ask them to put their heart, to use their heart to work in the organization? Yes. That is there. Uh, just just keep in mind that uh, how can you how can you engage them? How can you take their heart to work for, for the organization? Some people, I, I can tell, some people, they work for money. They work for money after they complete their assignment and then done. 
So uh, how can you do it? How can you engage them? How can you take their heart to be with us? Some people, you know, I, I, I give you an example about giving laptop. Maybe you don't know about the reason why they give laptop to you. Mm -hmm. Why we don't give you desktop? Desktop, it means for someone who complete the job, you know, like the first start they complete and done. But when the organization, the company give you a laptop, it means sometimes you cannot complete your job at the office done. So you need to take some time others to work on that. That is one part of the reason giving you laptop. It's not for fancy, it's not for well look, not for beautiful, for working. Yeah, Ling Singh, I'm uh, my bless your heart. Uh, I, I'm going to use your comment there as as the wrap up for this conversation, yeah. and and say that we've just spent um, an hour and twenty minutes uh, talking about employee engagement, um, and we're just scratching the surface. We're, we're just getting a good conversation going. And that's one of the things that our CLLC group does so well is shares information and participates. And we have pretty good engagement in this group. And so when we're able to travel more freely, this next trip of mine is going to be short and busy, busy, uh, but we'll have a little more time soon after. And Peter, I'd, I'd, I'd suggest that we could put together a two-day gathering of the CLLC to where we could get lots of engagement. And we've got at least 20 organizations here to, today and more when we get the group together and start sharing these ideas back and forth among the leaders in here and we can and we can get even deeper and deeper into this good conversation about how do we how do we build this this environment of good engagement with our people and just keep getting better at it because that'd be a, that's a great idea, Bill. There's, there, there's a wealth of, of information here. And I just called on a couple uh, with Leng Singh and Odom and, and Lita and, and Pepe, and, because I know they're doing a good job. And so we, isn't that one of the things we say about the CLLC is we'll all get smarter faster when we work together and share information. Mizuki, thank you so much for no. the uh, for putting that together for us and lovely thank presentation and, and and I and I, I do want to say thank you everyone for letting me speak and sharing your comments, sharing your thoughts. To Bill's point, I think there's so much I learned from all of you too. So I appreciate all of you and. I hope one day I will meet everyone in person. Um, I would love to join Bill and Peter at some point. <laughs> and I'll def def this will definitely not be the last of me joining the call, but I would love to come see all of you in person someday. Uh, and when we, when we do that two-day workshop on, uh, on creating deeper and better engagement, it'd uh, be wonderful to have you join us. Yeah, thank you. And another last, last thing to add on employee engagement, uh, when I talk employee engagement, don't forget about your own engagement too, because you're also part of that, everyone that Lang Seng talk about. Yeah, yeah. That's why I say Lang Seng, bless your heart, you, uh, mm -hmm. you, you brought this to a, uh, to an important point that it's, uh, that it's, it, it's a two way street. Yeah, I, I try to protect the leader burn out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's another, that's another whole topic about leader burnout, <laughs> and Peter's talked a bit about that, and uh, that's another two-day workshop, not a 30-minute uh, presentation, that uh, once, once we're able to uh, start arriving back in, uh, in Cambodia more regularly, uh, 
we promise you more of these opportunities to, to go deeper into some of these subjects. Nice to keep the group together with Zoom, but it's no substitute for those uh, longer, deeper sessions that we've been able to have 